Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. I was going to a university when my migraines were the absolute worst and it was a nightmare. Started trying to figure out how I was going to make um, going to college work for me when I was dealing with chronic migraines um, and severe depression and severe anxiety. So I wanted to share some of my tips with you and hopefully um, make your school experience a little bit less of a nightmare too. My number one tip is to register with the accessibility office. Before I registered with my school's accessibility center, I had no idea that this place even existed. When I first called to make the appointment with my school's accessibility center, they told me that I would need documentation of my disability. Um, and of the accommodations that I would need, which meant that I needed to contact my doctor, which was my neurologist at the time, and have their office write me a letter specifying which accommodations I was asking for. And for me, I got several accommodations. Um, something that was really stressful was the attendance policies for my classes because there were days I just couldn't show up to class and I was losing points, I was losing credit, simply for not being in class even though I was home and I was really sick and I was in bed. So I was able to get some leeway on attendance. I was able to have additional absences. Another accommodation that I was given was to have additional time on assignments and on tests. Um, while taking the tests, I could have more time if I needed it, but also the deadlines for tests and, and assignments. I was given extensions if I needed them. There were a couple of finals that I ended up having migraines around that time and I was able to take the final um, a little bit later on because I had those accommodations in place. All of my professors were extremely accommodating and they were very kind to work with me. If you're in the US, there are laws <laughs> that um, make them work with you but they were also just really willing to work with me. Um, my professors were older than me. They were like adults, not just a young adult, but they were adults. And so they'd had their own hard things happen in their lives. They had seen family members and friends um, have difficult health challenges and several of them had had their own health challenges and they were extremely accommodating to work with and I was really really grateful because I was very nervous initially that my professors would think I was lying or that I was faking it and that wasn't the case at all. They were very willing to work with me and wanted to communicate with me regularly just to know how I was doing. Just know that it's not putting you ahead of anyone else to have these accommodations you deserve to be on a level playing field as your classmates and it really doesn't put you ahead. It just gives you the same advantages that everyone else has. You should be able to take your test when you feel good and when you can think straight. And so definitely register with your accessibility office. Tip number two is to look for the classes you need to take and see if you can find them online. It takes a lot of physical and mental energy to get ready for a class, to drive, and then to walk to your different classes. And it's just a lot if you're already in pain. Having to go through that just takes a lot of energy. So being able to find any kind of online option is just a really, really great choice that we have as people who suffer with chronic pain. Tip number three is if you struggle with mental illness, I highly recommend trying to actually take classes in the lighter months and the warmer months. I had a couple of really, really bad winter semesters. Um, the semester from January through April has always been so hard for me. Even in like school growing up, I felt like I was more sick during that time. I felt like obviously the weather affects everyone's mood even if you don't have mental illness but if you do you don't need that kind of going against you naturally for me with my chronic migraines the weather changes those really really affect me and i live in a place where january to april is a lot of storms a lot of barometric pressure changes 
and so I decided I wasn't going to take classes anymore in that semester. I started taking my course load during the summer months and during the fall and I was so much happier. I also really loved taking summer courses because I felt like my professors were, were more relaxed. They also felt, you know, the warmth and the summer and they had kids who were home on summer break and so things just were a lot more relaxed. It felt like I was much more successful and much happier when I was going to school in the months that I was not in severe um, migraine pain. Tip number four is to view school in a big picture perspective. What do I mean by that? I mean that school is not the end goal. School is the means to get to the end goal. If your goal is to have a career in a certain area, if your goal is to you know hold a certain position or work with certain people or perform a certain function, that's why we go to school. And that was really helpful for me. My focus changed from, you know, wanting to just excel at every single assignment and being a perfectionist to looking at it big picture and saying, you know, this assignment is kind of a busy work assignment. It's going to take several hours. It's not worth very much of my grade. I'm not going to actually fulfill this assignment and I'm going to be okay. I'm an adult. I can put my life in perspective. I can prioritize and I'm going to be okay without this assignment and it's going to be worth it in the long run. It's not going to put me into a really bad migraine and I'm going to be fine and I'll still get an okay grade. I'm not going to have as high as a percentage. I may not get an A, but that's okay. My very last tip is to let yourself grieve unfulfilled dreams and unfulfilled expectations. I went into college thinking that I was going to fly through um, with you know, the four year plan. I was going to go on to get my master's and I was going to be um, a professor. And that's been a goal of mine for a very long time. It's something that I'm passionate about. And I've always loved school. And so I thought, this is no problem. I'm going to get through it. Even with this pain, even with the mental illness, I will find a way. And eventually I had to be realistic. And I had to say, I still have this goal. It's not going to happen in the time frame that I would like it to happen. I still don't have my bachelor's degree. I don't. I am going to have to reapply to go back to college and eventually I'm going to get there. I still have this goal and this dream to become a college professor, but life happens and, and you can do everything, but you can't do everything all at once. Right now I'm raising two little kids and I have a very fulfilling life and I'm happy with where I'm at and I am comfortable enough in knowing that my dreams will be fulfilled, that I can just really buckle down and enjoy this time in my kid's life and in my life and know that there will be a time and a place for me to go back to school. While I was actually in college and it just like felt like I was just kicking against a brick wall, like it was not working. I was trying to force school and it was just not meant to work. Um, I was driving on the freeway and there was a billboard. It was a pass it on billboard and it showed the oldest college graduate. Um, she graduated with her bachelor's degree at age 95 and underneath it said live life. And that billboard just has been a reminder to me ever since it, it really just hit me hard that my goal is now to graduate when I'm 90. By the time I'm 90, I hope to have a bachelor's degree. I know that that is absolutely um, an achievable goal. I know that I can do that. And so I'm able to move on and be able to put that on the shelf, put it on hold, and know that I'll be able to accomplish my goal. I will for sure get a bachelor's degree by the time I'm 90. And this beautiful 95 year old woman was such an inspiration to me. It's okay. It's okay if things don't turn out exactly the way you wanted it to, especially when it comes to, 
to college and to schooling trust that there is still going to be a purpose a place in society for you trust that you can still find fulfillment and find a good life even if things didn't happen the way that you thought they would and ultimately the really important dreams the really important goals we set for ourselves they will happen but we have to be patient we have to see things in this big picture perspective and along the way, when things don't work out, it's okay to take a minute, to take a few days, and, and to just feel sad. And to feel, feel sad that things did not work out the way that they wanted them to. I think feeling that sadness is really important because you can't move on and, and feel that peace and feel that hope again until you feel that mourning, that loss, that, that something's changed, that this idea of who you're going to be is different and that's okay but you have to feel that loss so take the time that you need to grieve the unmet goals and the unmet expectations and know that it's going to be okay in the long run school is hard it's really difficult if you are feeling well and if you're healthy but if you have chronic pain you have chronic migraines School is just insanely challenging. It feels like a fight for survival. I'm on your side. I know how it is and I want you to know you're not alone. There are people there who want to help you succeed. Let them help you. Don't be a hero. It's not worth it to kill yourself off to get a good grade or to get a degree. You are more important than your degree, than a grade. Your health, your happiness is more important. I hope wherever you are and however you're feeling today that you know you are valuable and you are important. Thank you for watching this video. I would love to hear any kind of tips or tricks that you have learned as you have been doing your own schooling. And even if things are really rough right now, leave a comment, let me know, and I will just let you know that I'm in your corner because we all need a cheerleader and I hope to be that person for you. Hope your day is filled with less pain and I will talk to you later. Bye.